Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet and Amazon, Facebook had survived in pandemic and their latest reports hammered home the point. And these five companies generated a huge amount of money, $300 billion in year revenue from last April to this August. All of their profits were better than expected. But there are some questions. Does this mean that all these stocks will be growing and worth buying? What should you know before investing? To which risk and opportunities you have to be prepared in case you want to jump in this boat? Are these companies overvalued significantly or they can grow even higher? Hi folks, my name is Dmitry Bonder. Hope you're doing well and stay because you know fun companies are good investment. Fun stocks have historically outperformed the S&P 500 index. And as of August 2021, FUNK stocks has returned more than double the index average since the market bottom in March 2009. I have positions in Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and since 2016, I invested a lot of money in these companies. I sold and bought these shares again and again, so I know what I'm talking about. And the investment upside applies across all big tech companies, but each company has a different investment opportunities and challenges. For example, Amazon stock has been under pressure since last month, when the company said it was seeing a slowdown in e-commerce growth as more people leave home to shop. Amazon is also in the crosshairs of regulators and lawmakers. The FTC is reviewing the company's proposed acquisition of MGM Film Studio. And the primary question is whether to allow the big to get bigger. So this is the main risk if you own Amazon stocks. Should the agency see to block the deal, it would have signal to shift in how regulators approach other tech companies. But folks, don't expect a rejection to move Amazon stock in the long term. MGM Film Studio would be a nice addition to Amazon's Prime Video offering, but they will not move the needle on the company's bottom line. By the way, in testifying to Congress last year, Amazon's founder and then CEO Jeff Bezos said, I believe Amazon should be scrutinized. We should scrutinize all large institutions, whether they're companies, government agency or non-profits. <laughs> Very good words. Our responsibility is to make sure we pass such scrutiny with flying colors. So why am I bullish regarding Amazon? Because despite all these facts and regulations, the company offers an opportunity to invest in three of the most important elements of current economy, online commerce, cloud computing, and transportation logistics. Amazon also has a growing advertising business and big ambitions in healthcare and bricks and mortar retail. And this past week, the Wall Street Journal reported that Amazon is planning to open department store style retail outlets. Wow, 20 years ago, I couldn't expect that Amazon will go in this brick and mortar business. Even with a 1.6 trillion current market valuation, Amazon might be a bargain based on its cloud business alone. So growth at Amazon Web Service is accelerating and revenue from the unit could hit an annualized 100 billion by 2023. So valuing that business at say 15 times sales most cloud application companies fetch higher valuations than that, gives you a market cap of 1.5 trillion, meaning that investors are getting Amazon e-commerce business and its Nansen advertisement business almost for free. I think you saw that Amazon stock has been basically flat for a year. At some point, investors will do the mess and it will push stocks up. Okay, the next stock from our list is Apple. Should you buy, sell or hold Apple? Some of my thoughts. So the iPhone makers shares have doubled in the end of 2019, increasing the company's market capitalization by more than one trillion. Apple grew their sales 36% in the latest quarter, following about 54% growth in the March quarter, the company's two best quarters since 2012. 
Apple, meanwhile, is more diverse than any other companies. And while the latest iPhone 12 is a hit, with sales up almost 50% in the latest quarter, everything else is looks very good for them. The company continues to see double-digit growth for its Macs, iPads, wearables business, Apple services segment, grew as well by 33% in the last quarter. And as you know, Apple just unveiled their new iPhone 13. So these upgrades are expected to be modest and Apple has already warned that it could have trouble meeting demand because of worsening company shortages. But please be very careful. Among the big tech group, Apple could face the most immediate regulatory risk, given growing complaints about its hefty 30% commission rates on sales on its App Store. You know that Epic Games sued Apple over the issue, a decision on the case is pending, and the situation has received attention in Washington. So, in July, three dozen state attorneys general sued Alphabet over the fees charged by its Google Play Store, and a parallel action against Apple seems inevitable, in my opinion. So if you want to invest in Apple, keep in mind this information. But the wild card for Apple investors is the possibility that company jumps into making cars. And many analysts who focus specifically on Apple stocks put the chance at least than 50%, but says that if it happens, it would be a measurable multiple expander for the stock. Apple currently trades at 26 time earnings estimates for the next 12 months. Just to compare, Tesla fetches an earnings multiple worth of 100 comparing to current earnings. And now let's talk about Microsoft. Microsoft has also thrived in the pandemic era. As my companies adopt digital processes to ensure their survival in the world of sharded offices and limited travel. The surge in PC demand triggered by the work from home trend has boosted the Windows business, lifted sales of Microsoft Surface Line and other uh, products in their big, big and long line. The company has even seen a pickup in ad revenue thanks to both the company's Bing search engine and the growth of LinkedIn that was acquired by Microsoft for more than $10 billion. But the core driver has been the growth of the company's Azure cloud business. Sales were up 51% in the latest quarter, and that was the main driver of their profitability. And that's why Microsoft's revenue grew 18% for the August 2021 fiscal year, and the company projects healthy double-digit revenue growth for fiscal 2022 year. But that steady growth doesn't come cheap. Microsoft has a market value of $2.2 trillion, which makes them the world's largest company after Apple. And it trades for 33 times earnings estimates for the next 12 months, making it the most expensive name in a big tech relative to growth. But for the risk averse investor, Microsoft is also the less vulnerable to regulations. Once the primary target of antitrust regulation, the company has been largely left out of the current regulatory uh, debate in Senate, in the Congress, and on the Wall Street. And now let's move to my favorite stocks in the list, Facebook and Alphabet. The opportunity in online advertisement, the primary domain of Alphabet, and by the way, Facebook, might get less attention than the cloud and smartphones, but it's not less compelling. Alphabet's ad sales grew by 69%. But YouTube's ads revenue soared by 84% to 7 billion in second quarter, putting the, this business on par with a Netflix, which reported quarterly revenue of 7.3 billion. And Netflix is expected to grow sales by 20% to almost 30 billion dollars this year, while YouTube's ad revenue is forecast to rise 45% to. 29 billion dollars. Wow, that's a great numbers, very impressive, and I think that's 
there are pretty big chance of a good return if you invest, if I invest in these companies. And by the way, there are several other wild cards for Alphabet. Alphabet has a mix of artificial intelligence and machine learning. That will be a key to driving Wall Street's forecasted cloud growth of 51% this year. Their core business, search advertising, is doing just fine meanwhile. Google remains the world's largest seller of advertising and YouTube accounts for just roughly 11% of revenue. Google represents more than 90% of internet search visit in the United States and it's clear that they have an amazing dominance in this, uh, in this area, but they could be a part of regulations, that could be under the uh, investigation by the government and they could be divided in some way. And of course Alphabet called these lawsuits misleading, flawed and dubious and woke to defend itself in the court. And one more company that you should consider if you want to invest in a funk stocks is a Facebook. And Facebook generates the most controversy of the big tech firms. In recent weeks the social networking giant has got some problems from the White House over its treatment of COVID-19 vaccine misinformation. And some lawmakers have spoken out about what they pursue to be violations of their free speech. Through it all, though, Facebook has remained a compelling stock for investment. Even after 30% gain this year, Facebook shares trade at just 23 times forward earnings, making it the cheapest of the big tech stocks and just a bit more pricey than S&P 500, even though Facebook remains in clear growth mode. It's not about S&P 500. For an asset that can grow earnings over the next three years, at something close to 30%, I think that's a highly attractive. There is a lot of valuation support for where the stock is now. One area that gets overlooked by investors is a Facebook growing focus on e-commerce. Facebook now has about 1.2 million active shops where small and medium-sized businesses can tap Facebook's enormous social network to tell their products and services. For instance, Shopify, which provides similar e-commerce tools to businesses, is valued at almost $200 billion. That is the kind of value that could accrue to Facebook over time. And seven years after buying WhatsApp, Facebook has thrown the service into a global phenomenon. So the company is slowly adding payment transfers to app making, it a potential rival to PayPal Holdings and their product Venmo. So there could be a near-term hiccups, though no problem, I think they are ready for it. And Facebook's ever-conservative chief financial officer David Wenher has warned investors that revenue growth will slow modestly for the rest of the year even when compared with the pre-COVID 2019 numbers. I personally think that the biggest risk for them is the privacy changes from Apple. And Apple have complicated ad targeting on some of the Facebook's mobile apps. And that's why Facebook has suggested that its third quarter results could be affected by these Apple changes. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope I gave you enough information to consider whether you should invest or not invest in funk stocks. And I hope you find this video valuable. Consider to subscribe, share this video or support my channel on Patreon. Have a good day. Bye.